Hi, uh, my name is Alan. I'm on behalf of Wisconsin, my co-host and the, the crew of the show and the staff of KCTV, I'd like to welcome you to a new show that we hope is a beautiful show for everybody, uh, Bridging Heaven and Earth. And we feel that it's a journey. It's a journey for all of us, and we'd like you to take it with us, a journey into greater love, uh, greater understanding, greater compassion, uh, greater opening of the heart. And we hope that in this period of time that we have to be on the air and share it with you, that we can all have that growth experience. And, uh, you know, we're just really excited about it, and we hope that, you know, you find it an interesting and exciting and uplifting uh, show. And we'd like to start off tonight with uh, Wisconsin doing an invocation and a meditation. So maybe we can all just move into the center of our being, into our hearts. As we call forth to Father and Mother God for a blessing this night for ourselves and for the earth, and for this show and we ask that the angels and the archangels be present among us tonight i call forth the angels and the archangels the angelic coast into this room now into our hearts into the city of santa barbara to overlight us to be with us and to resonate their divine qualities to us this night and i call forth the ascended masters to bring forth their love, their presence, the precious quality of their assistance into this room, into our hearts, also for this show. Also call forth the nature spirits, that this is a time for joy and a time for climbing into our hearts and playing. And I call forth also each of our own higher selves that Christ self, that part of us that is already anointed, that knows source, to come forth and be here now that we might, each of us, sit in that center of our being and, and be a blessing to humanity and to earth. And so maybe we can all just take a moment and go into a meditation together the crew and the audience, the guests, and and Alan and myself, and all who watch the show, that we could link up heart to heart now, soul to soul, like a ring, like a circle. And however it is that you step in to that journey within, please now go within and, and be there. Moving into the silence together for a minute. So, welcome again to Bridging Heaven and Earth. And that bridge is our heart. And so that's why we ask to please be in the heart. You will hear many words, you will hear much music, see many images tonight. Let them be felt by the heart, seen by the heart, heard by the heart. And they'll be different and they'll transform you. And tonight we have two really special guests, Michael Hammer and Antiquila. And we were going to show a clip and then bring them on. But let me tell you just a little bit about them first. The music that was played in the opening and that is being played now was composed, performed, orchestrated by Michael Hammer. This is kind of like the Michael Hammer show. You'll see because there's lots of this music. His music is, is incredible. I've been meditating with it, working with it. Um, it's just something that's become really dear to me. It's very transformative. The frequencies that Michael brings forth are just 
I don't even know what words to say about them, but they work. They change people. They facilitate an opening of the heart. They facilitate an acceleration of the beingness. <laughs> um, it's powerful, and you'll see that. He also did the video, and the water and he set up has, the chairs. The water has <laughs> never danced like, like when you see this water dancing in the colors. And also tonight, Antiqua will be here. She is here. And she is a dancer and a healer and what is called a dream weaver. And one of the things that she does is that she has the ability to weave the frequencies of the music that Michael brings forth. And it's very healing and transformative as well. And so we are going to move to a clip now and it is called Water Dance. And it was um, the water by the creek up in Northern California where Michael and Antiqua live. And here it is.
So I'm sitting here with Michael and Antigua. Hi again. Hello. We had a little lunch today during the day, and we're talking about how Michael's been playing music, I think, since he was in diapers. <laughs> and so, um, anyway, the music. The music's powerful. Can you talk a little bit about how you got into playing music and how it linked up with your spiritual life and just what it feels like when you're doing it. Hi always had an intense interest about music and any instrument I could get my hands on I would play and I used to open up a piano and sing into it and hear the sounds and pluck the strings I played it in weird ways and I didn't understand why I was what I was doing but I enjoyed doing it and I played viola sarangi an Indian boat instrument and then when synthesizers finally started coming out um, I was drawn to them and the first synthesizer was a Prophet 5 and I was just amazed at what I could do with it and then as the synthesizers evolved um, the sounds became more intricate and beautiful and I said this is this is me I can express my imagination and what I'm what's going on in me and so I started playing them and um, it's like door after door just open it was like just meant to be. Were you already meditating at that time and, and working on, you know, discovering, you know, who oh, you yes. are and everything? Oh, yes. Okay, so I, this just linked right into that. Yes, I was on the metaphysical path since a teenager. Yeah. So you play, and, and we'll get to Antiqua in just mm -hmm. a couple of minutes. So you play in a really unique, unique way, and maybe you can just talk a little bit about um, your higher identity, Yahoo and how it is that when you linked up with that and how what if what it feels like where do you go when you're playing where where is your consciousness i wouldn't say so much it, it's not a yahuel is my higher self so it's not something that's outside of me right. it's just the feeling of oneness and that um this beingness that is very vast um comes through the music and it's kind of, the feeling is like surfing a wave when you catch a beautiful wave and it mm. has its own energy to it. And you can move within that wave, but the wave carries you. And there's not much you could do because you're on the wave. <laughs> Did you discover that higher self through playing music? Did it, is that how you got in touch with your higher self? Was it in the music or through the music? or? Or how did it work? I would say yes, through yeah. the music, because um, a power and an energy would come through that was so beyond um, anything I had known. And then after playing for a while, it just became a part of me, so natural that it's right now, it's just totally natural. <laughs> <laughs> how did you give this experience like a name? How did, how did that come? That, you know, you had this experience of riding the wave, and then it was like, when did it become Yahoo-El? If I pronounced it right, I don't know. I knew I would do it wrong, so I did it. It was close. She was worried that I was going to say it wrong. Jacob or something. For, for many, uh, for over a year, I kept, I, a good friend of mine named Bob Thick, this was a very good channel, and I kept asking him if he would Oh, tell, tell me. Tell me what that energy And was. Merlin would be through and he would say, not yet, not yet, not yet. <laughs> and finally one day when I wasn't asking, he told me all about Yahuel. Mm. And it was, uh, it was so, so the information basically came from outside you, not through a meditation where as far as you... It's funny, were. I'm the least to experience Yahuel, all my friends experience him, but because he's me, I can't. Right. It's, it's like, like impossible. you're inside the aura. <laughs> it's a demonstration of the oneness. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Why separate it out? Yeah. So in Tinkle, did you, have you been dancing like since you were a child too? Well, or did you just pick it up like the last week? I, I was dancing as a child, but not, um, uh, at the same degree as Michael, constantly doing an instrument. I took ballet classes and did some dance around uh, that type of thing. And always interested in dancing and, and mostly movement. Very active and always wanting to, to move and express through, through that avenue. And so what does it mean to be like a dream weaver? Well, um, for me, um, I 
too was uh, magnetically attracted to Michael's music. So um, as I began to um, work with Michael in a group, um, the energies just began to, to flow pretty easily for me. And what I began to notice as I was doing this um, in meditation, that as I heard the music, um, there was an expression that needed to be um, it, it felt like I just had to you move. Had to manifest. Had to move. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I began to do this um, just moving my hands. I uh -huh. noticed at first it would begin with, with basic hand movements. Yeah. And then I began to feel um, sensations from the, from the sounds and, and the light, and I could feel it through my body. And so I just moved with that and using my hands when I started out, when we first started doing this as, as a group. And then it sort of evolved. And it evolved into um, more full body movement, more more, more dance, uh, where I was actually moving through the room or moving through the groups as we um, would do classes. So the um, it it was a sort of initiation. Each stage of it, it would come in, and as the frequencies and the energies would move, it's um, there was also a sensation of transmission. Where as I moved through the group. Um, I would hear the sounds of the music and the energies would flow. So you'd be like a vehicle for the energies, Absolutely. these healing energies to... Absolutely. And when that would occur, uh, an incredible feeling of, of light, uh, I, would, I call it Christ to light, would fill my heart. Uh -huh. um, and I, there so were a lot of tears for good. me. It was yeah, wonderful. It was very hard to explain. And, tears would, and people would always say, well, the tears, are you okay? Yeah. It was joy, just mm. overwhelming and just flowing out. Well, let's let's get a chance to see Antigua dancing, and I think you'll get a feeling for what she's talking about. <laughs> so, a clip should be coming up any minute. I think it's it's really beautiful, and it's also at the same place behind the house where they live.
they always look faded. <laughs> so, Michael, do you want to talk about how uh, your music influences your life and how it how it affects your your work in, with Ascension? Yes, that's a big subject. <laughs> Started a well, I should. <laughs> I would, I would say my work in my music is um, Ascension is taking we are in third dimensional reality which is a dimension of limitation where we have to deal with um, limitation of all kinds and fourth dimensional reality and fifth dimensional reality which is what Ascension is about is shifting to a higher frequency is what the music is all about because when you listen to it it raises your vibration and you can enter a higher vibratory rate a frequency rate and that'll change your experience in yes. a human body right? yes yeah. <laughs> well i can vouch for that i mean i have they do many uh, different uh, activational and transformational workshops and michael's music I've gone to several of the workshops where Michael's music, and sometimes he plays live, and I haven't been to any of those, but I have been to some where the music is played. And we get to places in those workshops, you know, where we are just not the same. You know, I mean, it is honestly true. And then the music moves, moves us into an accelerated place where you could just feel the cells you know in, in your body just like turning into little flames and like just just speeding up and you know i mean sometimes after these workshops i can't move for days you know so much is happening you know it's transformational and i say that real real life change happens and the music is the way that this man you know, transforms <laughs> others. You know, through this, through these frequencies, it's incredible. And th and that that was divine. Oh, you dancing. It was so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I have this. I have this vision. It probably didn't happen this way, but I have this vision that, like, in one of the workshops, you just got up. You know, and, and just about, started. That was it. Just right. <laughs> <laughs> and just couldn't hold back anymore. And just that like was, went for it. Was it. <laughs> Totally, just letting go and letting the uh, feeling safe to know that mm -hmm. this is something that I um, felt I had done before, yeah. um, maybe perhaps on another level, another dimension, mm -hmm. and how natural it felt just to move into that. And then I, I also felt that that's what part of the goddess energy is. Um, uh, the goddess moves um, in the unknown. It's sort of a mystery, so a lot of it is spontaneous. And so as it flows, then you just begin to flow with that and allow yourself to... Um, to learn and it's an experience in itself just to be um, in that energy I know that sometimes it. you know like I'll get up you know just in my room <laughs> put on music and I'll just dance you know and it feels really good I, I can't imagine doing it you know with, in front of people or like that but like it must be just incredibly freeing to like be able to let go oh yeah and, and also go into the oneness and also let go and be part of you know, and just move. Yes, it is. It is, and I, um, I feel that that a, a lot of us are dream weavers. A lot of us out there have um, that natural ability to move with the energies that they sense and feel um, uh, through music. And um, dance is very popular. Um, yeah. But moving energetically with it is is um, is an incredible experience, and being able to express that and bring it into a form of balance and harmony that um, reaches out to others. Um, that's what I like so much about it and what gives me great joy mm. to be able to express it in that way and especially through Michael's music um, I can't think of anything more static mm. <laughs> and more fun well, it's yeah, beautiful and it is that fun. you can do, do that together you share so mm. much of your lives together and you can share your, you know, your expressions who you are and where you're mm. going together it's, it's a yeah. gift it's a real mm. gift so I know that you work with two others, and I know these two others. So maybe you can explain how it is, what the octahedron is, and how it is that you come together with two other, you know, another, you know, woman and man, and and do your ascension work. How, how did you link up with them, and 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 what's what's created there? Well, I think it goes way back before time, <laughs> when we were all Kamoras. 
um, Comoros are um, a lineage, an ancient lineage. Yes. And we work together. This was before there was an earth and before time as we know it existed. And we agreed at a, throughout time to meet and work together. So it's an agreement from way back. <laughs> The, the four energies you're yes. talking about had mm -hmm. agreed to kind of meet up at different points in time, yes. and right. hook up and to hook up, uh -huh. and then we're all we're all dedicated to raising the vibration of this planet into the ascension energy, and um, we each have a unique gift, and we and the gifts all work together harmoniously. And we call ourselves the octahedron because of we're the um, really the eight points of the octahedron, although we're four, we each have two points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what's, what's interesting with the octahedron when it first started that we were given information about working together um, before we actually began doing the work, and there was a mention of the elements that um, each of us carried uh, one of the elements, fire, air, earth, and water, and each one of us um, was one of those, and we weren't really told who it was, so we... Um, did a little, well, you must be the air, you must be the earth, you must be the fire. It wasn't, fire? It wasn't the fire. astrologically. No, it's not it wasn't back astrologically. No. no, it wasn't that no. I should mention that two people's names are Shalea and Zandriel. Yes. Yeah. Dear yeah. friends. Hope to have them on the show, too. Yeah. So what are your visions? What are your plans? Where are you going to go from here? Do you have any new directions that you can... Yes. Share with us. Well, we, our latest direction is working on accelerating the DNA. Um, we know we, right now science knows of two strands of DNA, but there are really 12 strands. So we're working to uncover those other strands that will link us up to source and prevent things that we take for granted in third dimension, like aging and. Death, so wonderful to get past. And just death. the yeah. feeling of being separated from source and separated from. So, so the two DNAs that that you know we seem to operate under don't do it. They don't. They don't oh, you need the other ten to like, get like rolling. Like running on two cylinders right. when we have twelve. When we have twelve, so we're like a jaguar running <laughs> a Ford Raider. It's so. really the minimum amount to just exist. And uh -huh. the others allow us to really be who we really are. So, I mean, why were these not operating? Oh, that's a long story. Uh, Can you give me the whole show us? <laughs> I mean, they were, we start out at 12 and I've worked our yes. way to two and I've worked our way to zero? Is that yes, so we used to live uh, a million years uh -huh. originally or more in times of Lemuria. And then in Atlantis, our age, average age, went down as low as 10,000 years, which was. Uh, we and then as time went on, it, it, now, now it's, it's like it. 70 to 100 years is just, it's right. just a drop in the bucket. So, so they were operating on, on more of the DNA level. Oh so yes. At that and, point, and, they and is that do. why they sunk? <laughs> because there was like an extra weight. Or <laughs> <laughs> what happened to those cultures that caused, if they were like operating so they high? Were, there were other beings who didn't have the highest... They had the twos. They had the two DNA. No, they were very evolved too, but they were um, trying to direct the show themselves. And they... If all these DNAs are cooking, why would somebody... I mean, does ego still exist when there's this DNA cooking? Or... Uh, it, apparently it does. <laughs> apparently it does. So, I mean, so even with 12 and we live 10,000 years, we're still dealing with ego? Oh. Is that... As you understand well, it? There were um, beings that created, you might call them creator gods. They created things, I mean, they even created planets, solar systems, galaxies. And um, they created the life forms on this planet too. And they um, wanted to be worshipped and acknowledged. And they took themselves in the limelight away from the source. And that is a way of, you might say, ego. Seems like it. Yes. This is vanity television. Most <laughs> status. No, it seems like it, right? When... And and they had an, they created the human life forms, um, and they wanted them to be as slaves. 
and they wanted them to exist minimally as two DNAs. So they stripped the DNAs. They stripped the DNA. So our, I mean, we, we have a memory. <laughs> we have a remembrance, many of us, like a memory of other times. You know, oh, yeah. and and more having more having the strands. So there's like a quest. There's a desire in people, and sometimes people don't know what what to call it. You know, like they'll just say, "I just know, I know there's more." And this is actually part of that knowledge of there's more, and I know there's more. You know, and it seems we seem like you know we just can't get there. Like we just can't meditate enough to get there because actually there's. There's some missing links within us, you know, and it's not our fault. So, in, in a sense, when I started learning about that, um, it, it was a great relief because it was like, uh, well, it's not like what's wrong with me, you know, how did I get here? It was just like, uh, what can I do to accelerate this? What can I do to help change this, to, to exactly. rejuvenate this? And then, and that's why the ascension work is so important. It's so powerful because you can actually become a co-creator you know you can actually take part you know with the other divine beings like the ones that we call in at the beginning and work with them to rejuvenate and resurrect all those powers that were lost you know and yes. it's like that's just you know i feel like that's what i are the other live for are the i mean are each one of like the other ten <laughs> he's stuck on the <laughs> right I, I really it's interesting uh -huh. to it I, I mean are they all the same i mean so you add one and it's like you know, you're 50% more, you know, I mean, or, or is each DNA strand, or is it, is it like different? I mean, like different attributes attributed to them? Or? Yeah, we, we are so vast, and um, we all know it, but there's only a small amount of us that can really operate here, and that's because we don't have access to that, and a lot of people are now finding it and starting to access that. So that's why there's such a great acceleration on this planet right now. People are remembering their past, and uh, it's quite a story. I mean, that's yeah. the... it, do you think it has something to do with, like, in history, the end of the uh, Piscean Age and the beginning of the Aquarian Age? I mean, was it, like, set for this time to accelerate, yeah, this, this, in a sense? This time is our time to uh, the planet, for the planet to ascend. Um, every planet in our, in our solar system has already ascended and undergone initiation. But um, the two DNA. The Earth, <laughs> the Earth is the last, the last the place, passion. and oh, we yes. happen to be the focal point in this local universe because this the Earth happen. ascending um, is key to everyone else going up to the next level too. And it looks and like so we can use all the help we can get. Yes, that's why we all have incarnated into this lifetime to do that. To do this show. Yeah. yeah. And that is, <laughs> that is what the whole new age is about. Oh, that, well, we did, we did it in like 15 minutes. We, we tied it all up. <laughs> I love it. We have a, um, a short clip. Maybe we can all just take this love and this awareness and, and watch a few more minutes with this music. We can we can be transformed even as we're sitting here. Gain a DNA as yeah. we sit. <laughs>
talk about like the how now we have a couple of minutes maybe we can just talk a little bit about your experiences of how to get this acceleration going to how to how to get this this vibratory rate moving you know just a little bit more your experience of it. I, I think part of it um, is that is opening up the heart I think uh, allowing yourself to open uh, and express with your heart I know we do a lot of expressing and, and um, um, through the mental body, I call the mental uh, areas, and, and a lot of us are very good at that. But opening the heart allows for that natural acceleration to occur, and connecting with that energy, and it helps to release um, resentments, angers, old patterns um, uh, that that we may be ready to let go of. Are there any tools, or are there any like processes, or anything? I mean. I think a, a big one is, is quiet, silence, being being able to t touch in with yourself, to slow down, um, to begin, uh, I, for me one way is always Michael's music, of course, the listening to music that inspires and that um, allows that natural creative spark to, to occur. And, and, and each time the heart opens, uh, there, the next step seems to unfold where to go and what to do. There um, are books, you know, that, that sometimes you're drawn to. There are classes, there are um, people to talk to. Um, and um, just just opening and allowing that. And there's so flow. much assistance from the higher realms too. Oh, there is, it's a tremendous amount. And just asking, I found a lot of times um, that there's a key to that and we forget to ask, but if you want something and you ask for it, Mm -hmm. um, with with that sincerity, mm -hmm. that that naturally will occur. Um, but I also say, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> be specific, <laughs> because I found in that, that that's important also. Um, and just just opening to that, that uh, and allowing that energy to come in, there'll be a certain amount of guidance that will will occur. I would also say it's going to happen no matter what. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and there's nothing you can do to stop it. And the best thing you could do is to learn to flow with it, flow, flow with the energies that are occurring with you, because it's going to be different for everyone. And everyone needs to find what it is they're supposed to do on this planet that brings them joy and happiness, and do it. Uh huh. And and do you have any recommendation like how someone to get in touch with that? The easiest way is just to do what makes you happy. I mean, that's, that's so simple and it's so profound. Because everyone, um, all diseases are caused through stress and um, feelings that you're not doing what you should be doing. And if you're doing what is your life purpose mm -hmm. and you're flowing with it yeah, and being fulfilled, yeah, and you're you fulfilled, that is the best thing you could do. Yeah, feel, you feel like the wind is yeah. in your sails. Yeah. This yeah. The expression I always use is you feel like your bike is being held up from the back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. not exactly like there are trainer wheels, but there's just, you know, like your yeah, bed's absolutely. walking behind you and you know, you kind of ride along and you're safe. You feel safe yeah. to proceed. It's 
like, you know, feeling that we are the children, you know, mm. that we are a son and a daughter, and that really our father is holding up, holding up our life, our breath, holding up our breath from inside, <laughs> like the bicycle. I mean, and to feel that yeah. is, so, is so joyful that even when when it's hard, even when it's hard here, I feel like, you know, you were talking about being happy. Even when it's hard here, I know that deep, actually I'm really happy yeah. because I because I know that, you know, I am um, moving and that we're all moving. And I also feel like it's important, like when those energies come in, when you bring those energies in, to anchor them in the earth, anchor them to our mother's body, you know, oh, and just because she's, yeah. she's taking us where we're going. We couldn't all be going, you know, we're all going and she's going with us and and maybe she's going first and she's taking us, but I just feel how like would you How would you anchor? Her. How do you anchor? I just actually like direct, I direct my energies. When energies are coming into to me and I feel really full, I actually intend and send the energies down into the earth, you know, just consciously, just send them down you know, and and spread myself, you know, almost like pulling myself, um, driving myself into the earth, you know, and then sending myself up into the heavens. And actually, I become like the bridge, you know, it sounds like a good way to end the show, but like I become the bridge between heaven and earth, each of us in the heart. That's really the, the heart is the bridge, you know, oh, yes. and, oh, and yes. just by extending in, in all those directions. It's not even just up and down, it's all around and to each other. And to consciously do that and be doing that. And, and it's like, that's, that's sort of, you know, the way I do it. It's just like, I do it, you know, consciously, because that's how we ascend consciously is to become aware of our evolution and how to move our evolution and how to be part consciously of our evolution. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. Mm. Beautiful. Any last minute messages for viewers? Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> that is just to. Um, accept who you are totally mm. and bring the power of that however I mean however insignificant or great it may seem because everyone has a part to play in this great plan and everyone needs everyone else to make it work and we're all in this, in this together all in this great soup cosmic <laughs> soup Soup, yes. <laughs> Looks like pea soup sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and we're all on this journey. We're all <laughs> An going, incredible going journey. Going. And it and it's gonna happen. These shifts are gonna happen very soon. Within the next ten years. Um, there's gonna be such a major change on this planet that we won't recognize it as we know it today. We won't recognize ourselves. No. I mean, already, be, I don't we're recognize ourselves. We're going to be different beings. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there are many people who are very skilled who've done ascension work before, and this, you know, they come to this planet to assist it. And um, with a lot of DNA. <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> no. When, when, the thing is, when you come to this planet, you give it up. You lose really? it. Oh yes. My God. And I you lose your memory. Like... That's part of the game here. It's uh, really a game. Yeah. Right. And then you regain it. You can right. be a vast being, and when you come here, you, you lose your memory of who you were, uh -huh. and then you have to refine it. Very it's interesting very difficult. experiment here, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yes. Very interesting. <laughs> I mean, the angels say that we're really courageous to come to do this. Yes. You know, and they, they tell me you're just really brave, you know, to do this. To be get to place your um, remembrance, like you check it in, like in the cloakroom, and, you know, mm -hmm. and then have to go get it again. Mm -hmm. you know, but the, what's happening when you do that? You know, you just you, you don't go back where you were. You just you just go higher. The whole thing goes higher. If I would say there's one real message, it's we are all masters. Yeah. Deep down, we're all masters. And we just have to unveil that. A little last message. I think Michael now. wrapped it up pretty well there. Um, I would, uh, I would just like to add that um, 
that that heart is is where the key is, and to, to continue to um, to bring the heart energies to fullness within um, each and every person, to be able to um, to move into that oneness, and to be um, to know that um, that we're safe to do that, that there are those that are with us and who encourage us and who would support us. And um, in that expression of, of bringing heaven to earth, because I feel that's that's part of what we're doing, bringing heaven to earth and then anchoring that energy here. And it's a good time to be here. And um, oh, thank yeah. you both for coming. I mean, <laughs> it was you. divine. Thank you. Thank you for having us. <laughs> really. And if you have any questions about anything that was said on this show, please get in touch. Get in touch with either Alan or myself or the studio, through the studio, interested in the music or anything, and, and we'll answer your questions. Okay, well, I would like to thank everybody for, for tuning in, and I hope you had a beautiful experience, because I certainly did. And uh, it was a really powerful show for me. And, uh, you know, next week uh, we're having... Uh, Carol Gurney, who uh, is an animal communicator, uh, and she was swimming with the dolphins and getting some information from them. And we have tapes of her swimming with the dolphins and videos. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it just should be really a beautiful show. And you know, we hope that you come, come, come on back and you know, you know, tune in uh, next Thursday at uh, nine o'clock on 17. And, you know, it should be a beautiful show. So, uh, they have maybe, messages too, the dolphins. Yeah, the dolphins have specific messages that they want. Uh -huh. so I don't know if it was about DNA, but it would be something. <laughs> uh, so maybe we'll just end with a prayer and, you know, thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Guide us and protect us. Open our hearts. Allow us to grow and expand and experience the divinity and the power and the love and the glory that we are. Okay, well, so I hope that you know, everybody had a wonderful experience and uh, and we'll be back next week, and I hope you're back too. So, thank you. Thanks again. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.